I'm Ryan Milliken from Hardway Performance, and you're listening to the Diesel Power Podcast. This is Jaron Holder from Holder Down Performance. This is Anthony Rings from XDP. I'm Demetri Miller with No Zone Diesel. I'm Drew with DNJ Precision Machine. I'm Pinky. And you're listening to the Diesel Power Podcast. Diesel Power Podcast. Diesel Power Podcast. And you're listening to the Diesel Power Podcast. The one and only Diesel Power Podcast. I wanted to uh, welcome you on the Diesel Power Podcast, Dennis. Looks like there's been some uh, some stuff going on on Facebook that's kind of caught it on fire. And uh, oh man, it has been. You can't log on Facebook right now without seeing. You now my phone keeps freezing and the the uh, the feed's going nuts. So I mean, I, I've seen a little bit, you know, kind of what it is, but I mean, what's what's the deal? What's going on? Well, what. What I saw Kai Kelly, me and him, I work with him on data logger stuff, and he wanted, he uh, he was looking for a new tow rig, so I said, but dude, just buy this one. I, it's been sitting for five years. I said, he runs Induction Solution Nitro Systems, and uh, so I was like, I'll call Induction Solutions. I'll put a cool-ass nitro system on it. You want to play with it on the street? It's fine. You can tow with it. It's fine. It, it's nothing. It's not by no means the most powerful diesel truck out there. It's uh, We don't claim it to be, but it's fun as hell, you know. And then you got your uh, – so we've been posting up videos, which it's been fun. We went to the pad. We've raced fancy four-wheelers. I mean, we've been down in Mississippi having a damn blast. I mean, I know street racing's not uh, sanctioned, you know, which we uh, – you know, that's not what we're trying to do. It just kind of – the group we kind of happened up into, and, and it was just fun to go do. Those guys on that show, they're no joke as far as – they ain't just do it. They don't just do it on the show. I mean, they literally – uh, we'll shut the shop down. Scott Taylor, we stopped by his shop 10 minutes later. Uh, I thought we was going to uh, – we'd never run the truck before. Uh, so I thought we were going to, um, you know, wait till they get off work. No, he's like, no, no, we'll shut the shop down. They shut the shop down. We head to the back side of his track. You know, the next thing you know, we're racing the Jeep SRT8. Uh, t- uh, turboed, 88 millimeter. I mean, we're just expecting to get our ass handed to us. And – we ended up pulling that dude by a couple of truck links. And then they said, you want to race some more? I mean, they, they, these guys are eat up with racing, period. Like, this was on a track, Scott's track. It just said we go to the quarter mile, we come the other way where there's no prep. And, man, they're just coming out of the woodwork. Now, we finally had to leave. We was going over to Bobby Ducati's. And so we won those three races. So, you know, we're feeling, uh, we're feeling pretty good. And uh, we beat a Mustang and a Monte Carlo and – you know, I'm trying to figure out the streets a little to uh, figure out the lie factor. You know, mostly just like to give you an example of the lie factor, so you know what I mean. Like your guys on the internet that are the ones doing all the mouthing, they're the ones that have a lie factor. They'll spike a thousand horse or 1500 horse or whatever, and but it'll spike it, come right back down. They can't do nothing with it. They got 1500 horse run 11 twos. It, it's just pathetic. Now, then you have your true racers and true horsepower guys that like your LaVon Miller, Ryan Milliken, Seth uh, Sullivan, uh, Derek Rose, and the whole pro street field. And, you know, even your 1050 classes um, and even your 770, they're good. They're really good competitors in there. And then of course you got your pro mods and pro dragster guys. But uh, so I'm trying to figure out the life factor here. And supposedly we raced a uh, nine, uh, 890 Jeep uh, SRT8 and two low 10-second um, cars. And I'm like, so I was trying to talk to Scott Taylor and figure this out because he said, they're, they're, they taught us to street race is what they did. So I told Scott, and I was like, dude, I'm not going to, you know, they were really cool guys. I said, I ain't calling nobody a liar, but that truck is not will not run nine seconds. I can tell you that right now. You know, I said, it, it, you know, I'd be, have, I'd be safe to say if it could run 10, it would be on a, smoking good day you know and everything would have to be right i'd have to you know spray the hell out of it so anyway we leave there we go to bobby ducati's and uh man now bobby ducati is a hardcore street racer a hardcore we watched some dude lose 10 grand on the street i mean it was more more to us it was more of a field trip and so then we we made our way over to kai's when we delivered the truck and then showed him a few things about it. He launched it a few times. Well, he decides we're going to the pad. So, oh yeah, we were on the way. Did we? Yeah, on the way to uh, to the pad, we stopped off at this uh, one place. 
just out of the middle of nowhere, people everywhere. We pull up in there. Titus walks up in the middle of them and goes, all right, who wants some of the truck? Next thing I know, we're racing a Banshee with wheelie bars and a Hayabusa motor on it. So we beat that guy. Now, I mean, we are feeling great right now. <laughs> and then, then we go to the pad. This is what kind of, I think, got a lot of it started and coming over. The guy at, that we raced at the pad, I don't know how Kai got this race. He put something on Facebook, and this is the guy that, I guess, responded. I don't know, really totally know how they do it all. So, anyway, this dude comes up. He wants to race, you know, so he wants to race quarter mile. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to race quarter mile. I was doing him a favor. Everybody that has diesels and listens to your podcast know how diesels back half. You know, and yeah. Kai hadn't run the truck before. So, you know, I was like, no, nah, we'll just do eight mile heads up. He goes, no, I want quarter mile. I was like, I don't want quarter mile. I want eight mile heads up. So, anyway, that went back and forth. So then I asked him, I said, all right, I want the hit then. You know, that went back and forth. He wasn't going to do it. And um, I was like, fine, let's go eight mile heads up. He goes, fine, you can have the hit. And I was like, oh, my God. And that's the video you see, the Kevin versus Kai, where Kai kills him. But it's mainly because, I mean, I, we run tight converters. We had three stages of nitrous on it. I mean, I know what he says his car runs. He says it traps at 128. Um, we've raced for years, man. That We don't trap at that speed. So, but anyway, that I, that's what I think started it all. And then, uh, of course, that rolls over. Kai's messing around in town is what he's doing. And um, are you still here or did I lose you? Nope, I'm here. Okay, well, I'm doing all the talking, man. You jump in at any time. And, uh, so, anyway, then Kai, he texts me one night and says he's going to race a full-blown race car. That's the one they're saying is a bad video, which it is a bad video, but it's funny. Instead of, you know, it's all just fun. So, taking it all personal, that truck will not beat a LaVon Miller, Ryan Milliken, Seth Sullivan, Derek Rose. Or in, it won't even beat any Pro Street trucks, and I'd be willing to say it couldn't compete with the 1050 trucks. So he was just having some fun with it. It's the fastest diesel he's ever had. You know, it's pretty much. And, and then for some the street cars and stuff that he would race, he's having fun with it. But uh, that's where all that got started. And, of course, then um, what I like to do, these little whiny-ass kids now, uh, man, it is fucking awesome. All you got to do is get them wound up, and here they come a-running. Man, they, they'll just come around. They got the baddest truck known to man that their dad paid for or their grandpa paid for. That one dude, that Nick Campbell, his grandpa pays for all his shit. I mean, he don't even pay for it. He pays himself. I used to run in the town that they, that they live in. Oh, you ought to hear how they make fun of him and that Kellen Cuckaloy or whatever the hell his name is. Kellen's truck's broke. He don't even have a truck running. I mean, these guys are showing pictures of money like there's some big baller and it's like what i mean man i've just got them wound tighter than a clock right now what uh like you, what i've been watching or I, I literally just caught it last night i guess i live in a cave or something but it's a long read <laughs> yeah it was I, I didn't get all the way through it but it uh there's something that popped up in there i don't i don't remember if you said it or somebody else but um it was about you know someone I think it was about Kai. First mm-hmm. diesel truck gets it, jumps in, and it's it's a storm of just back and forth and everything going on. And, it you know, some of it got really personal with people and everything like that. And it almost seems to be two things going on. I mean, you've got – Yeah, I agree. And let's address that personal thing real quick. Uh, you know, I got thick skin. But, I mean, and this is a lesson that some of these younger kids need to know. We need to leave wives and family out of it. That's not cool. I mean, that part of it, that is the most uncool thing you can do. And that'll get me, you know, I love to get in there and poke and play, and I think they're having fun with it too. But talking about wives and and families, I'm not about that. I'm not going to participate in it. So, I mean, you know, that, that it needs to be, you know, there needs to be some kind of etiquette, but we got to leave uh, families out. I'm not participating in any of that. I don't want to talk about anybody's wives or anything else. And I know they've mentioned Sheila, my wife. Well, if it wasn't for Sheila, they wouldn't even have an event to go to next week. There's so much she does behind the scenes. And all of our wives help. I mean, I, I, I can't do it all. 
so you know that's a that's the only kind of personal thing that you know they can talk about me all they want. I don't give a shit. It doesn't bother me one bit. But the wife thing uh, kind of addresses the personal. Now I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh well, the the other part, you know, that that uh, when I was reading this, uh, it kind of grabbed my attention. Is uh, what does this do for the diesel? industry racing market people who love them because it seems like I can see both sides of it, you know, is not necessarily anyone in particular, but you know, you're there on Facebook and, and somebody calls out these big guys and says, Hey, bring the cash. Let's do it. And these guys are like, man, well, I paid my dues. You know, I did X, Y, Z and I had to work my way up to get into this. It's uh-huh. not fair. And then on the other side, you got, well, how do you get people interested in it? How do you get, uh, Someone who doesn't know well, diesel, why, why do they want to come in it and not get in to this kind of the, Facebook drama? The way, the, the way to get in it, Facebook will never get any of them a race. I can tell you that right now. And the only thing that even any of those guys use Facebook for is if they've already got a race, they've already negotiated, and they want to blow it up. That's the way they'll get a race. I mean, just calling Kai out for ten grand, he probably won't even respond. He gets it all day long, every day. You know, when we drop the truck off, he's hard to even get a chance to talk to because his phone blows up all day long. And it's always, you know, all he, all he was wanting to do with the truck was race it in town. That truck's going to tow a trailer. That's all it's going to do. He was having some fun. And if you'll look at the post, it said in Pike County. That's where he lives. So, uh, you know, that part of it's just, you know, the paying your dues is a lot of it. You want to get out there and do it. Here's the thing. If you've got an NHRA license, I don't recommend you doing it. They will take it. I mean, the NHRA is totally against it. You know, and, and you know, any com- the, the street racing and competition racing is two different things. You know, it's great publicity that diesel can get out there and do that, you know, but the diesel industry changed a lot now. And instead of uh, getting behind diesels, they want to go poke at the, the guy driving it who's got more, a bigger name than anybody. Diesel. So... You know, there's a lot of ways. It's just not the way. They like all them tags and stuff. I, you know, he's probably done turned the damn tags off of it. You want to say? Hey. What would you say to the guys that no, no, no. Uh, that uh, just say this is? It's not real. It's just you know, it's something to to drum up interest and in the event this week, and it's just a publicity stunt. I saw that on some of the posts too. Well, it's, uh, it, I mean, you do everything when you, you know, to, like when I, at my event, you know, that event cost about two hundred and forty, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000 put on. Well, of course you want to try to get all the people, and then you want to try to make it as fun as you can for the people and have different things to see. This is, having a gas class in there is not anything new. I used to have some uh, 275 cars that would come in and run, and, and there wasn't one diesel person that didn't like it. That didn't mean they wanted to go race cars it's just right if, you, if you're into racing you like racing you're into pulling you like pulling i yeah. mean it's not like it's not like they're two different worlds they're the same world so the whole purpose of even the the street outlaw guys coming is i'm going to draw a crowd that would not come to the diesels they, i mean i'm not saying they wouldn't like them if they seen them but it's just diesel trucks it just hasn't grabbed their interest so what we're doing we're bringing the street outlaw guys I mean, the ones that like racing that watch that, they're going to come see them. Well, guess what they're going to do while they're there? They're going to get a glimpse of diesel trucks, diesel dragsters. I mean, good-looking diesel trucks. There's there's a, a ton of good-looking show trucks. I mean, so I'm going to introduce all them people that would have never came, but they can't tell all guys. I'm going to show them diesel. Well, while they're there, I don't care, man. If you've never seen a, a pro street truck go down the track or the dragster, I mean, or 1050. I don't even mean to leave anybody out. There's a lot of ET trucks that just, you know, they're from a drag racing side. It's not easy to run an 11, you know, in a car. So I'm bringing all kinds of people that like racing, and I'm wanting to show them diesel racing. Because, I mean, we've spent years trying to get the diesel trucks up to where they are now. They put on a good show. I mean, the participants and the racers have all done their job. Now it's our job as promoters to promote them and get as many people in here and get diesel racing growing. You think, you think Kai will take the truck up there to, to TF? No, I know for a fact uh, it, it's not coming. Too much controversy over it. 
Might Nobody's be bringing the Lisa. <laughs> well, here's it, huh? Oh, it, it would be, but here's the thing. I mean, man, you know, them guys stay busy filming. Like, they, they don't even have – Discovery Channel calls them, they got to go. I mean, so it's not uh, – to him, it's not it's, – it's, he was having fun with the truck. I mean, you're, you're, there's tons of trucks out there that will beat you, Devil. It's not like it's uh, some big new superpower. I mean, you know, like I said, it's – most 1050 trucks would probably get it. So, you know, unless it just happened to be running good, that thing's on a stock bottom end. You know, so it's a, it only can go so high before we get to see all the way through it. So, I, know we, I, I do know, I do know he's not bringing it. But and to be honest, with you, I told him not to bring it. He's got a race to concentrate on, and he's got twenty thousand dollars that he's racing for. He ain't, you know, it was. Uh, and you know what, man? I'll be honest with you. I, you know, th- th- all these guys are cool in this street outlaw stuff. I mean, just as as people in general, they they don't think they're big, bad, anything else. I mean, they're good at what they do, but uh, you know, I really want them to like the the diesel guys and you know, cross over and it, it, put it this way, it won't hurt. But you know, these kids making asses of themselves and talking about his wife and this and that. And, I mean. That ain't that ain't it ain't helping anything, you know. He you know he don't want to do anything like that, you know. I keep going. Oh, that's just a few, man, because your core diesel guys that operate, you know, like they're supposed to in the race, and those are great guys, you know. Whether you you know, but this other nonsense that goes on, that's coming from fans. That ain't coming from uh, diesel racing guys, and you know, so it's kind of. But they keep posting on his page and this and that, and I'm like, man. You guys are just screwing it up. You're not even going to get to watch it. So what I'm kind of hoping is, you know, that, that some of that stuff will stop, you know, as far as bringing families into it, and you know, and get to meet a few of them, to see that they're, you know, they're, you know, they're good, they're good people. They're just not acting like it right now, and that's not the core. The, the people that know what they're acting like, they know. If it doesn't apply to you, I'm not talking to you. I'm not calling anybody out that, you know, don't deserve it. If there was, I, well, I know it's uh, we have a long weekend coming up, and it's Friday afternoon, and I'm sure you know, there's tons of things you have to do. But if there was one, you know, kind of final thing you you could say, uh, to, you know, to people following these posts, um, that uh, if you say like the final word, what would you tell them? Uh, get behind diesels. I mean, whether get behind diesels in general. No matter who's doing what with it, I mean, you know, if, just to give you an example, if there was another guy out on – Brian Parker done this at one time. Just, I mean, he got out racing Art McMahon, and, you know, it, it just exploded. But, I mean, back then, we were all behind him. Now it's like, well, LeVon Miller's faster. Well, of course he is. Ron Milliken's faster. Of course he is. doesn't matter. This situation happened on a weekend. You know, it's what happened and what was going on. You know, get behind your fellow diesel guy and grow it. This individual shit, it, it just, it, it'll never, it'll never work trying to break it all down an individual, just like from electronic companies to engine builders, transmission builders. I'm sure nobody out there stays in business because they build junk. So my, my biggest thing that I'd like to see is everybody get behind the diesel. No matter if you like somebody or not, get behind the industry. That's how it'll grow. That's because the, the, the amount of money being put into these trucks is ridiculous. So, you know, you can always have a common ground. And common ground being the trucks and the motors that we all love. It doesn't matter if they took offense to what I said or I took offense to what they said. None of that matters. It matters that we're all in diesel. And it will not get any bigger than it is now if we don't get behind diesel in general. And I've done this for 18 years, so, I mean... It, I, I'm not just thinking of this. <laughs> right. Well, we uh, we appreciate you coming on, Dennis, and uh, addressing some of the things that are floating around there, and and uh, uh, get, put, you know, putting some clarity to it. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, in general, I'm pretty sure it's all in good fun. But we got to kind of watch. I mean, I don't have a, you know. Um, Hell, I can't even remember half the stuff people say. That's how much it means to me, and I'm sure they're the same way. You know, you just kind of have a little smart mouth contest, and it's fun, and I like doing that too. So, you know, but like I said, if we just 
you know, push push forward. So, I mean, I can't give you an example of of, of anything right now. So that's how that's how much I, I forget about it after I read it. I'm just I'm more quick witted than I am sit there and stew on it. And then once I say something, I'm done with it. 